Hello and welcome to Movies for Dumb Guys. I'm your dumb guy host, Joe Johnson, and I am joined by Ryan Sharp. You can't handle the truth. Tim Williams. Merry Christmas, movie house. <laughs> and straight from Comics, Beer, and Sci-Fi, Richie Rollins. Oh, oh, that is yeah. the best one I've ever I, heard. Th- I agree. Wow. That was, folks, that was not a sound effect. That came from Richie's yes. face. That yes. was Sean Connery, right? It was, <laughs> it was Sean Connery doing that rabbit from that, that movie. Was, uh, great. I'm impressed. All right, that'll wrap up. But no, no, no. no. <laughs> today, uh, we're going to do something a little special here today. We're going to talk about movies' greatest moments. Those moments in movies that generate goosebumps or laughter or tears, uh, those moments that you remember from your movie-going experience, um, those moments that, uh, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm sitting at home and I'm looking for something to watch and there's a movie coming on, I, I'll turn a movie on hoping to catch a certain moment that I could watch over and over and over again. So that's what we're going to be discussing I got, today. I got it. You said yeah. bring you to tears. I mean, if that's the case, we got no, like you're going to talk about every movie and <laughs> two second, two minute commercial on TV. That- so we got a couple of spoilers. <laughs> is what you're saying here is first, Joe's going to be crying all the time. And oh, I got and the I, I just, every movie. I just have only Sean Connery. He's moments. like <laughs> Tide <laughs> Pods. That's so cute. <laughs> that commercial was awesome. <laughs> all right, so um. So I compiled it. Uh, this was tough. I, I First, I came up with a list of about 20 or 25 of my favorite movie moments, whittled it down to my top 10 favorite modern movie moments, movies that I've seen in my lifetime. And then if we have time, I'm going to do my top five classic movie moments, uh, maybe at the end of the podcast. Um, so anyone who has ever listened to this podcast will not be shocked by the number one movie <sighs> moment on my list. It's going to be James Bond. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. Man, to be a teenager in the theater watching that on the screen... What movie was that from? <laughs> the Empire of the Sun. No, The Empire Strikes Back. Um, this was one of the most epic moments. Everybody was talking about it. It was unexpected, a complete shocker. Um, you know, in, in the first Star Wars movie, you know, it was just a battle between good and evil, and Luke uh, defeats the Empire, blows up the Death Star. And uh, there's no inkling <laughs> that there's all? a connection to, to those two. And then all of a sudden, the second one rolls around, and that bomb is dropped, and everyone's jaws hung open. It was one of the most epic movie moments of all time. Ryan, I know you're you don't you're not a big Star Wars guy, but come on, you got to admit that this was huge. Come on, all right. So let me start by talking about my list for a second. Not what's on it, but just how I came about it. Um, we were only given four days to research this. This is a semester long project. So <laughs> when I tell you about my list here, um, when you see me on the street next week, if you ask me about it, I might have a completely different list. Things are going to be, uh, I'm going to be like in, in this podcast. I'll probably be like, Oh my God, I forgot about that. I can't believe it's not on my list. <clears throat> However, this particular moment is on my list. Hey! Absolutely. I don't have to be a huge star Wars fan. To appreciate the significance of that moment in film, the surprise element, um, and what it meant. It was a, a great, great moment. Thank you. Tim. That is also my number one. And um, I was eight years old when I would have been in the theater and seen this. And, yeah, it uh, was just really unexpected. And I remember going home and telling my dad that Darth Vader was lying about it um (laughs) yeah i was like i was like yeah no that can't be um just because like you said i mean there was just no inkling well you didn't think there was an inkling of it but looking back just the way that obi-wan hesitates before he tells him what he tells him in the first one um you could see that but uh but yeah i just remember like everybody in the theater was just like you know gasped yeah but again, I didn't believe it until so, 
Neither did Luke Skywalker. Okay. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Richie. Oh, and oh, oh yes, yes. Oh, let me say yes. this. Oh, yes. the, the the moment right before that, where you think that where he, Luke gets his hand cut off. Oh, right. You're thinking, holy crap, that's like. Big enough, a big enough. Oh, moment. sure. Oh, yeah. And then right yeah. after that, Raise then the they stakes. followed up wow. yeah. with yeah. that kick to the balls. He just <clears> lopped <throat> off his own son's hand. Holy moly. I'm telling you. What a sick yeah. psychopath. So, Rich, where does it rank on your list? Well, you know, it's up in the top five. Uh, it, this movie had a lot of good uh, moments. Uh, Han Solo moment. Was huge. Rosen and Carpenter. Rosen and Carpenter. That was huge to me, too, you know. but uh, I love you. I know. There, that's that's a great moment. <laughs> that's it was a great moment. That's a defining Han Solo moment. It was, moment. it was, and see, that was a great Han Solo moment. But overall, I would agree with you guys that this would have to be in your top uh, because it is a great movie moment, and it's the, the big bombshell. Did you have something right? No. Oh, I thought you were trying to jump in there. No. All right, so we're this is almost unanimous. This might be one of the first times we've had this unanimous decision that this is definitely one of the greatest movie moments of all time. Now, <clears throat> the rest of my list. Like Ryan said, it's interchangeable. Any one of these can be moved up and down on my list. Um, but since this is from my second most favorite movie on my list, I made this my second greatest moment on my greatest moment movies list. Um, but I can't really play an audio clip from it. So I'm going to play a clip kind of just before it and then a clip just after it. So here's the clip that kind of sets it up. No time to argue. Throw me the idol. I throw you the whip. <laughs> Give me the whip. Adios, senor. So, the opening minutes of Raiders of the Lost Ark are unlike anything I'd ever seen before. You're introduced to Indiana Jones in silhouette, goes into the cave, goes has to kind of bypass all those weird ancient gadgets, which I don't even know how physics would cause these things to play out. Uh, but he, he gets that golden idol, and then he does the sandbag thing, and all of a sudden it sinks, and it starts triggering mayhem and anarchy. And then he's, he has to get out of that cave. His darts are shooting at him. I mean, that whole sequence is amazing. But then he turns that corner, looks behind him, and sees this giant boulder coming down behind him. And he has to outrace this boulder to the exit of the cave, and that's the first five minutes of the movie. I mean, that's such an incredible movie moment. And he dives out of the cave, and the boulder seals it shut. He looks up and... Dr. Jones, again, we see there is nothing you can possess which I cannot take away. And he loses the golden fertility idol to his nemesis. Um... That opening sequence in Raiders of Lost Ark uh, is on my list of the second greatest movie moment of all time. Now, I, I had to go back and forth between that particular moment and the moment where he's on the truck, gets thrown out of the window, hanging from the grill, goes under the truck, back on top, and kicks the driver out of the front window. That's a pretty awesome moment, too. But uh, if I have to choose one or the other, i got to go with the boulder scene because it's, it's, it introduces us to Indiana Jones. Mm. Ryan, your thoughts. That's a nice boulder. Um, that's on my list. I, I don't. Uh, I know you like the cr- climb underneath and over and kick out the guy. That didn't even wasn't even consideration when you compare the two. Right. Epic, epic. Everybody knows it. Uh, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. You know what that is. Um, it's a great um, show that they put on on at Disney as part of their movie. Oh, I've seen that the stunt show. It's yeah, awesome. the stunt show is a great thing. Um, Phenomenal. the Boulder is a huge part of that. Um, and I don't know. I as a kid, I would you know we would reenact this scene and and uh you know sometimes we didn't make it. But um yeah, great 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 moment in movie history. Tim, <clears throat> I have it as a honorable mention on mine. Um. But uh, but yeah, that was fantastic. I mean, there's there's actually even more moments in that movie, like when he kills the Cairo swordsman when he shoots the Cairo swordsman. Right. I mean that that was like a huge. I remember that getting just like a huge laugh. Yeah. When I saw, <coughs> excuse me, when I saw it. The and ending. they said the whole reason for that <laughs> is because uh, Harrison Ford wasn't feeling well that day, and they didn't right. want to shoot a big elaborate choreographed fight scene. Yeah. So let's just shoot him. Yeah. There's that. But yeah, to just to start that movie off with that that part with the boulder 
chasing them and then um you know then even getting uh shot at with the arrows right after uh yeah that i mean whole, you make a good point just... and, and you said it but it didn't occur to me until tim said it it that's how you open the movie so that could have really set you up for a for huge fail yeah like right. you know that epic open and then like yeah. everything was downhill after that but luckily this movie delivered but. now it did sort of pay homage to the james bond movies because there were several james bond movies that would start out with an elaborate stunt sequence then go into the opening title so i think in that way it did pay oh, yeah. tribute to james bond a little bit rich your thoughts on that opening raiders sequence well i'll tell you what raiders is one big moment yeah um, it was uh that it's iconic like you guys are all saying and stuff and i would even go as far as even the fight right by the uh plane the plane was, was a great one epic yeah. you know it's just there's so many epic moments in this movie Base you, melting you know. at the end yeah you just yeah. you couldn't I couldn't. I, I put it as honorable mention because I just couldn't pick. It's one. tough. It was it's tough. tough to pick one. Yeah. Even that final shot of of the ark being put away and that right? warehouse full of crates is so yeah. iconic. So yeah, definitely. All right, number three on my list. I'm going to go to the Aliens franchise. Now, the first Alien has a lot of great moments, from the chest bursting to the face huggers and. All that stuff, and I had to think, wow, what what moment kind of embodies the Alien movies? And I had to go to the sequel, Aliens, um, for my favorite movie moment from that franchise, and just to set it up a little bit. So basically, they think they've escaped the Alien Queen, um, Newt and uh, Ripley and Bishop, and the audience thinks, okay, the movie's winding down, when all of a sudden Bishop gets ripped in half. And you realize that the alien queen had stored, uh, stowed away on the uh, the ship there. So so Newt goes and hides in the metal grates, and Ripley takes off and locks herself into the storage locker or whatever. And the queen is going after Newt. And she's screaming, and the queen's ripping off the panels of the floor. And Newt is screaming when all of a sudden that storage locker door opens up, and we hear this. from her you bitch i got goosebumps uh i love that scene and then the fight sequence that uh takes place after that with ripley going toe to toe with the alien queen and beating the crap out of me that's just such a great movie moment moment one of my all-time favorite moments um i absolutely love that um ryan did, did any of the alien moments uh land on your top 10 or honorable mentions um they say the truth is out there but i have yet to find the truth so no it did not tim uh that is a great moment like you said uh but and like i said before i i saw aliens before i saw alien but i still had to put the chestburster scene from alien as my number three number one i have that i have that as my number three okay actually um it's pretty great because it's so I mean, shocking. Like, nobody saw that coming. Right. And like I said, I didn't see that movie until later. But I remember, like, my parents went and saw it. And, they, you know, they never bothered to go see Aliens or anything. But but I just remember they all went and saw that. And, like, my dad specifically told me about that scene. And, um, yeah, it just, I mean, I imagine it just freaked, freaked everybody out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's definitely one of the greatest movie moments of all time. Uh, Richie, any comments on the Alien franchise? You did not give me a spoiler alert. I have not seen Aliens yet. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why are you on this podcast? <laughs> all right. Because so, you guys need some intelligent people on this podcast. <laughs> all right. So my first three are fantasy, sci-fi sort of a thing. Go um, figure. Uh, number four is uh, sort of within that vein, but not quite. Now, again, let me set this up a little bit. So The Princess Bride. Uh, throughout the movie, Inigo Montoya keeps saying this line over and over and over again. My name is Inigo Montoya. You come about, prepare to die. Um, and so you think, is, are they, is, is there going to be a payoff to this? What's going to happen? When are they going to get to this? And so finally in the castle at the end, Inigo Montoya comes face to face with the six fingered man. They have an epic battle and then they're chasing them and then they they come face to face and this is how it all sort of winds up hello my name is Inigo Montoya you killed my father prepare to die now offer me money yes power to promise
promise me that. All that I have and more. Please, offer me everything I ask for. Anything you want. <laughs> Goosebumps, man. You guys have goosebumps? I have goosebumps. Um, it was such a satisfying conclusion to see Inigo Montoya come face to face with the six fingered man and dispatch him. And uh and then like not know what to do with the rest of his life. I've been in the revenge business for so long. I don't know what to do next. Um that was one of the most satisfying movie moments for me, was that he finally got his revenge that he had been seeking his entire life. Ryan. <laughs> you crazy man I bet you there's a lot of listeners who will not agree with that statement right now. not agree with your statement that is true uh, it did not give me any bumps anywhere um, <laughs> nope not my thing I don't thing. I'm not yeah Princess Bride not my not my I know you've said not my bag baby Tim help me out here I can't help you out oh, with this my. I uh, Princess Bride is okay but I don't have the affection for it like like a lot of male Men do. <laughs> Mailman? The USPS? The yeah. USPS. <laughs> Rich, you're my only hope. <laughs> Why are you quoting Star Wars? <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Johnson. Oh, here we go. This whole movie is built of moments after moments. I agree. And that is that. one of the best moments of that movie, but man, there's so many great moments in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that you're agreeing with me or not, but uh, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm allowing it. I'm allowing it. All is. right. I don't know what to do with my hands. This next uh, moment, uh, it's a, it's a, okay. We're veering a little bit away from the theme I've established right here. I'm not even going to set this one up. I'm just going to play this moment, and I will await the smiles on your faces. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers and you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee Pulp Fiction Uh, in my opinion one of the greatest movies ever made I have a, a visceral memory of seeing it in a theater I had no idea what it was didn't know what to expect. Didn't know who Quentin Tarantino was. Had never seen Reservoir Dogs. My friends kind of dragged me to the theater. And I sat there gripping the arms of my seat, totally tensed up that when I walked out of the theater, I was sore. My muscles ached <laughs> because I was so tense throughout that movie. Like Richie said earlier, a collection of great moments from Royale with cheese to the story about the watch to uh, so much stuff in there, but something about Sam Jackson delivering that Bible passage for <laughs> killing somebody is so badass and so epic. And um, one of my all time favorite movie moments, Ryan. I, I, I agree with what you said about there's so many in this movie. It's hard to pick. It really is. Even the opening sequence was on a lot of people's list, um, you know, uh, in the diner. Um, and then you got oh, the honey bunny and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you know, the wallet, of course, uh, was very epic. And they even <laughs> produced them and, and sold them. And I'm, I'm sure they still sell. Um, that part, though, definitely sticks out as, as a, a front runner. It was uh, the delivery of Sam Jackson, amazing delivery of it. Um, and, uh, just the scene itself as it took place, how it took place, what it was. Say what again? I mean, and that, I mean, say what again, (laughs) Brett? And that is, uh, forever, uh, will be used in memes and whatever comes after memes and sound bites and, and spoofs on movies and everything. So interesting. Uh, It uh, is is not on my list, but I will, uh, agree that it, it needs to be, um, you know, it's up there. A uh, little bit of trivia, when um, when uh, Nick Fury, uh, everyone thinks Nick Fury is dead in the Avenger movies, uh, they go to his tombstone, and there's a passage from Ezekiel, whatever it is. 25, 17. Uh, yeah, 20, wow, very good. Yeah. Um, so, the, yeah, so his, <laughs> his speech Rich. <laughs> from Pulp Fiction is quoted on Nick Fury's tombstone, which I think yeah. is such an awesome touch. 
Tim, yeah. your thoughts on this? Um, yeah, I would put that up there. It didn't make my list, but uh, Pulp Fiction is one of my favorite movies of all time. When it, I had seen Reservoir Dogs, so I kind of knew what to expect a little bit. Um, but <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, that scene, especially because leading up to there, you know, those two are just talking like normal, normal talk, and you don't see them. You don't really see him turn that on until they get in there. Yeah. And then as soon as that's done, too, he's like, tells the other guy, he's like, yeah, come on, Marvin. It's like, <laughs> just like totally back to normal. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, even like the dance scene and the heroin scene, the overdose scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, there's just so many things in that. I mean, even the gimp stuff mm -hmm. and the sword when he finally kills. Oh, when he, when, when, he finally when Bruce gets Willis turns and comes back. That's one of the. That's an incredible yeah. moment. Like he yeah. could easily leave and and go, and he oh, yeah. turns and comes back yeah. and saves Marcella Wallace or right. Marcellus Wallace. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, there's just so many great scenes in that movie. Rich, I tell you what, <laughs> this movie is filled with great scenes, like Tim was talking about. And one of the reasons I would uh, agree with you on all these things as being a great movie moment is because it really boosted a pretty good career that Sam Jackson had. And then you go back to the dance scene, reignited a John legendary Travolta. career of John Travolta. So that is a great, you know, there's great movie moments all over and uh, Quentin Tarantino. You know, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, I remember reading something about <clears throat> an interview with Tarantino years ago. And he said, basically his directing style is he's like, you know how you see movies and there's like a couple of great moments in that movie. He's like, I try to make, a movie like that with the great whole movie. movie is great. Moment. Right, right. The only thing, in my opinion, that have come that has come close to Pulp Fiction from Quentin Tarantino is Kill Bill Part One. I watched Kill Bill recently, and as I'm sitting there watching it again for the first time in a long time, I'm thinking this is a masterpiece. But Pulp Fiction is Quentin Tarantino's masterpiece. He will always be remembered for Pulp Fiction. Uh, all right, so that's my top five greatest movie moments. So now we're going to send it around the table. Uh, Ryan, what do you got for us? Well, I tell you what, um, when I made my list, I, I didn't really at first know how to compile it. Do I go with greatest scenes? Do I go with greatest, uh, like quotes kind of do I, you know? And so basically as I started writing things down, what ended up happening is uh, a lot of my list is those unexpected moments where everything comes together or, uh, just that epic scene. Um, so number one on my list is actually going to be usual suspects when you finally figure out who Kaiser Sose is. And the masterpiece of being able to tell an entire story or go through an entire movie based off of the billboard or the the whatever you want to call it behind. The, yeah, the, the cork board. The cork board. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just absolute genius. And I had no idea when I went to the theater what this movie was going to be about. And it still ranks up there on my list of favorite movies uh, to this day. I'm I'm thinking uh, for a future podcast we might do greatest uh, endings or maybe just discuss endings of movies, and that is one of the greatest endings in movie history. Absolutely, Tim. Do you concur? I do. I did not. I I, I had this as a possible one, but when I whittled it down, it didn't make my list. Uh, mainly because not not that I've seen every one of my movies at the theater, but you know it was just something that I had seen at the theater. I tried to like leave it. Uh, you know, mostly stuff that I'd seen at the theater, but yeah, I remember like sitting at home and <clears throat> I rented it and watched it, and same thing. Like I was just like, it, it's not even anything that was on my radar that that's how it was going to end. It was just like that totally came out of the blue, and uh, yeah, I just it was great. great Rich, ending. have you seen it? I know I've seen it, but I just cannot recall it. It didn't stick with me, I guess, or maybe I was distracted when I watched it. Okay. What? I, I think <laughs> yeah, it was a, you can't watch that one. Fine yeah, choice, Brian. Thank number, you. Thank you. Number two. I'm just a little rattled by <laughs> what I just heard. I try to move on when I hear uh, yeah, stuff like I, that. Uh, geez. <laughs> um, number two on my list um, was I'll, I'll go from the end of a movie to the very beginning of a movie, and that's the opening scene for Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Um, just an. Uh, a cinematic masterpiece and um you know you felt like you were there in the theater you, you know, the bullets were whizzing by your head and surround sound was crazy <laughs> um just a, a an amazing amazing um moment in film 
be able to recreate that, make you feel a part of it as bad as it is. Um, an amazing piece of, uh, film history. I heard that, uh, veterans, especially world war two veterans had to leave the theater because it brought back, uh, the memories and the horrors of war that it was so accurate and, and um, so real that, uh, they had to excuse themselves. That's yeah. how, that's how impactful that opening scene was. I believe it. Yeah. Number two on my list. Tim. Um, it did not make my list, but I, but I mean, it, it definitely could have. And, um, I, uh, I remember my buddy had already seen the movie and I didn't really want to see it. I'm not a huge war movie fan, but he talked me into it. And then, yeah, I was just like, I mean, that, that scene just sucks you in immediately to, you know, a- everything in that movie. I mean, there's some other iconic parts in that movie too. I mean, just, uh, or just, just big moments. Like when, when, uh, the one guy's in the hand to hand combat and he ends up stabbing, the, stabbing knife, the other yeah. guy. I mean, that, yeah. that part, I mean, when, when he's sniping the guys out of the tower, I mean, it's yeah, uh, Barry Pepper. Just, yeah, yeah, there's just uh, oh. a lot of scenes, but that's Barry yeah, Pepper. That, yeah, he's a real nice. Oh, yeah, he's a super nice guy. He uh, <laughs> oh, you met him. There's a there's a lot of lot of uh, mosquitoes when we were filming '61, and uh, Rich, you were, you may recall this. You were you were yeah, there. Yeah, um, oh, oh, my toe. He uh, he he got us off um, the bug spray. What? Bug spray. What? Bug spray. Um, <laughs> because the mosquitoes were so so. That came out wrong. He got his bug spray. There was so many mosquitoes that we needed bug repellent, and he got us bug repellent. Yes. Oh, we weren't, yes, um, that's I get it now. Bug repu- so, they had jo- in it. Joel edited that out in post. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I'm going to use it over and over and over again. Sound drop. <laughs> Barry Pepper got us off. Yeah. Nice guy. Nice guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he was a really swell guy. Sounds, soft soft hands. Like Happy know. ending every Let's time. get this train back on the track there, Rich. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. Uh, uh, <laughs> Well, Ryan, I'll give it to you. That's all. Take this. Saving Ryan. It was good. It was a great movie. I love the beginning. Great moment. I agree. Uh, nice pick, Ryan. Thank good you. pick. All right. Number three. All right. Number three. Um, this one is uh, Rocky running up the steps. Oh, yeah. Um, well, just the whole run and then ending with the rock up, the running up the steps. Uh, it, that whole montage, like I still use it to this day when I go run on the treadmill pretending to be Rocky. Um, it is just an iconic moment. It made, uh, you know, made you want to be him. It, he had that cool factor. And, um, I think it was, uh, you know, people go run the steps. I've been to the steps. I was on my way to New York and we took a detour just to go to the statue and run the steps. That was the only reason we were in uh, Philadelphia just to run the steps. So yeah. Still to this day, a big, big uh, attraction. Some interesting tidbits about that sequence when he's running through the street early in the morning. Uh, they filmed that kind of guerrilla style where they had a camera in a like an unmarked van, and nobody, a lot of the people that you see in those scenes had no idea what was going on. And the guy who like throws an orange to Rocky and he catches it, totally unscripted. They had then they saw like the barge on the water, and they had Sylvester Sloan jump out, run as they filmed him, and then he jump back in the van. <laughs> And then the steps uh, sequence was one of the very first film sequences, if, if not the first film sequence that was ever filmed with a steady cam. And they the, took the steady cam the up first, the steps yeah. and went yeah. around them, and it was remarkable. And I think that might be one of the reasons why that scene is so iconic and so memorable is we had never seen anything like that in a movie before. Right. That hmm. camera following them up the steps and circling them around them. So it was the first steady cam. He, the guy, actually invented it for that scene. Like yeah, he, he made it. Well, actually, the, the guy who invented the steady cam to to help sell it, if I remember this correctly, filmed his sister running up the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum, and the first use of the steady cam was to film that scene on the steps of the Philadelphia Art go. Museum. That's crazy. That's wow. fate. So, yeah. Uh, your thoughts um, on Rocky? Yeah, I have that as my number seven, actually. Um, yeah, just I mean, just like Ryan said, just a iconic moment. Yeah. Um, I think the even, ending even possibly more iconic than the boxing matches. Right. Even though the ending was pretty great because it was, it's so rare that like you see a movie like that and Rocky doesn't win. Mm-hmm. Like really? Right. So the ending is pretty iconic. And yeah. then I remember watching Rocky fairly recently within the last year or so and when when Rocky knocks a cocky uh Apollo on his ass 
I was on my feet. I was like cheering on my feet, like, oh, and I had seen yeah. the movie. But when yeah. he knocked down <laughs> Apollo for the first time, that was a pretty great moment, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the whole Rocky franchise had those moments. I have yeah. Rocky Four yeah, on definitely. my list as an honorable mention just because I, I was up as a kid cheering, yeah. boxing the screen. Those are the moments that we're talking about. Rich? Definitely a good choice there, Ryan. Thank uh, you. Nice picks. And, uh, Thank you. you know, another uh, little trivia for you. They actually tried to mimic a, a running race of where Rocky went in that movie. And they were trying to do a marathon, but they found out that if he was to run the actual <laughs> thing, it was well over 26 miles. <laughs> and at the end of the 26 miles or 30 miles, wherever he ran, he ran up the steps. Yeah. I got to tell you, Rocky should not have lost that fight. Rocky. That, <laughs> that reminds me of an obscure movie called, uh, I think it was called Tiger Town. And it had uh, uh, Roy uh, Schneider, Roy, Sh- Roy Schneider from Schneider, uh, yeah. Jaws. Love that. that movie. And there's a scene where a kid is running to Tiger Stadium, and he's in Hamtramck, and then he's at Eastern Market, and then he's at Tiger Stadium. And I'm like, this kid is a robot. Like he was <laughs> all over the place. So. He's fast. All right, that's a definitely a great one, Ryan. All right, so uh, just because it's a great segue, we talk about the study cam shot of him running up there and how. It might be a great scene because of the technology that was introduced at the time. And that's why this movie falls on my list. It's not one of my favorite movies. I know you guys love it. But the moment in the movie itself, in The Matrix, with the bullet time effect, uh, that was something that changed film. I agree. That's on my honorable mention. Now, there, I, there's two moments in there that, are, there's, again, Matrix is made up of a lot of great movie, uh, movie moments. Mm-hmm. One is the first time we see Trinity leap into the air and then the camera rotates around her that's a great moment uh the bullet time effect you're talking about where neo is bent over backwards and bullets are zooming past either either one that just the whole what was the other one you're talking about they're they're that's bullet time oh Oh, yeah okay with the the 360 yeah and then there's the the fight sequence between him and uh agent smith so many great moments in that movie yeah (laughs) tim yeah, um, that that didn't make my list. Uh, I'm not a huge Matrix fan, but I will agree. Neither am I. That, uh, but yeah, I will agree though I that, that 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 definitely. I mean, look at all the copycats that it inspired. Right? I mean, it was like right after that, there were so many movies that tried to employ the same type of stuff. Scary and, movie. Uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, you you definitely got to give it credit for the special effects. All right, Rich. Did not make my list, although I did think about it because, like you guys said, those are pretty good moments, but uh, did not make my list. It was revolutionary. I think uh, if you search the public access um, <laughs> archives, archives <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll find that it was, it was uh, redone, very, very well executed <laughs> by some local talent in Lake Orion. How many, how many cameras did we set up? We drive. set up like six or seven, seven cameras. Yeah. In a semicircle and yes. tried to recreate that moment. I think and we it, did a great job. It was a poor man's version of bullet time, but it was pretty damn good. Linear editing. Um, yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Uh, so what was that, number four? <clears throat> yeah. Um, number five, I, I have so many that it's hard for me to pick, but this one, um, I'm going to I'm gonna bring it down a little bit. And um, I'm going to say the, the girl in the red coat uh, from Chandler's ah. List. Okay. Um, awful. Just awful, but... What a what a movie moment! Yeah, so. I agree. I um I usually bring that moment up in my classes. You know, when I teach filmmaking classes and stuff like that. I talk about, you know, you could shoot a movie in black and white or whatever, but if you want to draw the eye to something or create uh, emotion, you could add that single color, um, to really emphasize it. And uh, you know, you're so used to that grayscale palette in Schindler's List that when you see the red, it's it's jarring. It's like shocking. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Joe, Joe, the show's called Movie for Dumb Guys. <laughs> I know. Yeah, thanks, let's, Ryan. Let's not sound intellectual. Right. Damn. Intell- intellectual. Um, Schindler's well, List. Yeah, like I said before, I, I went and saw Schindler's List, but uh, I made out the whole time. You made but, out uh, during yeah. Schindler's List? Yeah. Wow. Were so, you in a church, I too? <laughs> no, I never saw Schindler's List. Sorry. <laughs> Richie? <laughs> no, that was a great moment, like you said. Uh, Hard moment, really, but it was just well. That's it's, it's it's a painful the, movie. It's a painful to watch. moment, but that, that's yeah. that's what we're talking about. Is this great mo- moments and they move you, whether yeah. it be a positive or negative, they move you, and that was uh, yeah. That's just one of the it had the impact. The, the I think they were right, right. There, yeah. All right, so that's Ryan's top five. Uh, Tim, what's in your top five that we haven't touched on yet? 
Um, my number two is when Dorothy arrives in Oz and it changes from black and white to mm. color in Wizard of Oz. That's a great one. Although, obviously, I was not there at the theater to see that, but I, I had to include <laughs> that. <laughs> well, we've all grown up with it. You know, when we were younger, before cable TV and everything, it was an annual event where we would all gather around the TV, watch Wizard of Oz every year. And then when cable rolled around and video rolled around, I, I watched it multiple times a year. And it's, Now, was that, was that the first movie that was in color? No. No, it wasn't oh, okay. the first movie in color. Okay. Um, but... Uh, they, the they did that transition yeah. from black and white to color was was incredible. Yeah. Um, and then when she steps out and they show Munchkin Land and then she has that famous line, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. Um, I actually have a moment from Wizard of Oz on my classics movie, Liz. Yes, I'm ready now. Then close your eyes and tap your heels together three times and think to yourself, there's no place like home. 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 So where you pick the beginning of that sequence, I pick the end of the sequence. The the scene of her clicking her heels together three times, transitioning back from color to black and white, knowing that she always had the ability to go home. Uh, yeah, those, uh, those are some pretty great moments. Did you cry? I mean, there's a ton of great moments. I don't moments. recall I mean, that. Really, that I mean, there's a ton of great moments. Yeah. But, but uh, just just that part in the beginning, going from black and white to... That's pretty to, epic. ...to the uh, vibrant colors of the land of Oz. Yeah. Rich, your thoughts? I'll allow it. Your what? Allow it? I'll allow it. All right. Ryan? Um, definitely a great mo- movie moment, just not mine. Okay. All right. Tim, next. Um, okay, I guess I really didn't see a lot of my top five at the theaters. Uh, or my number three was the chestburster scene from Alien. Okay. Um, the what? The chest, chestburster, chestburster scene the... from the original Alien. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my number four <laughs> is the ending of the original Planet of the Apes. Oh, man. <clears throat> wow, that didn't even pop it in my head until you just mentioned it. Damn you! Damn dirty apes! You that was that up. was before the damn dirty apes was was earlier, but uh, but yeah, just you blew it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn you all the hell. Oh, that's damn. the line. That's the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is one of the greatest movie moments of all time. When you realize you've been on Earth, spoiler right. alert, the entire time. Mm-hmm. Right. Written by Rod Serling. So uh, uh, Twilight Zone. Uh, right. So I mean you. you you probably should have, if you were familiar with the Twilight Zone, you probably should have expected a twist like that. I think there was a Twilight Zone episode like that where mm-hmm. they the astronauts took off and then it crashed and mm-hmm. you find out that they were on Earth the yeah. whole time. But mm-hmm. Boy, that's a good one. Rich, your thoughts on Planet of the Apes? That's a really good one. It's a really good one. Thank you. I like that one. It was a really good one. Good. He's really bringing his A game know, today. Ryan? Ryan? Uh, I've never seen it. The and original like, Planet of the Apes. And that's with for Chuck real. Heston? Oh, I've I've seen Lord. space balls. He owned land up in St. Helen, Michigan. Space, space balls. You've seen the parodies. You've I've seen, seen the, the parodies. It's You've great. seen the Tim Burton movie. Exactly. So uh, I know the scene very well through you know clips here and there. Did and you see the Mark Wahlberg version and uh, parodies. That's the but, one I was talking about. Oh, that was horrible. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah, they did spoof it in uh, somewhat space spoof it in, uh, space in, uh, ball. in space balls, but they did in uh, Strange Brew too. Oh, did they? <laughs> when they were shooting their like futuristic oh, yeah. movie, he had like right. a broken little statue. <laughs> right. Statue. Oh, Jay and Silent Bob too. Statue of Liberty. They did a Jay and Silent Bob as well. Uh, no, that's yeah, a great but, one, Tim. Uh, and my number five is a, another Star Wars movie, the original Star Wars, when Luke finally blows up the the Death Star. Now, what do you think that the Han Solo moment coming back? Do you think that helps put that over the top? That yeah, I think I mean, so. I think that like that whole scene. I that, mean, but Han Solo returning to the scene of the battle, I think, is what gets that audience cheer. Like when yeah. he goes, "Yahoo!" Oh yeah, the definitely. Crowd goes nuts. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a huge part of it. But all, yeah. I mean, but also with Obi Wan talking to him and guiding him, and yeah. you know, I mean, just that, just that whole thing. Luke, you switched but, off your targeting computer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's Use the force, Luke. <laughs> Just the that's, whole thing. That's but, great. But I, I mean, I saw I saw this the cantina scene on a lot of people's lists too, and I, I would throw that on there too, just because we had never seen anything like that, yeah, really before. I mean, nothing where it was just like a bunch of aliens just hanging out drinking alcohol or whatever, yeah, you know, hanging I'd, out at a bar with the original music. I would I would say with the original version. I well, they didn't change it for the special the, editions in that one. They yeah, changed it Return of the Jedi. Yeah, they didn't Star change Wars. the cantina scene. They right. changed it's a different uh, song. Jabba the Hutt's uh, band. Back, watch around, it again. But... It's a different, uh, it's a different song. No, you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here to place a wager. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, we know what you think. All right, so that's that's Tim's top five. Uh, Tim's let's top go to Richie with your oh top my goodness. five movie moments well, man. of all time. Number one. It's a bathroom break for everybody. <laughs> Number one, I did change my mind, Joe, because we talked about it earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, you brought up a good point. Uh, originally, it was going to be the end of Quinn Luke when he smiles because he's he's beat the system. I mean, he's dying, but he beat the system. They didn't beat him. But it's all set up earlier in the movie with the fight scene with George Kennedy, who is dragline, and he's knocking him down, knocking him down, and everybody's telling Luke to stay down, and Luke keeps getting back up, and he knocks him down, and he's finally like, stay down. And Luke just looks up at him and says, you're going to have to kill me. And he just keeps coming back, coming back, and mm-hmm. eventually uh, dragline has to walk away. And, and it's just, it was a foreshadowing, I guess, of the whole movie. It's, you're not going to keep this guy down. I agree. I mean, not only do I think it's it's a, it embodies the movie, but I think it's a great analogy for life that you you roll with the punches and you get That's, back up. Ironically, my dad raised me on that. There you go. That movie. Uh, have you seen Cool Hand Luke Ryan? Never seen it. Tim. Ironically, my dad raised me on trying to force feed me hard boiled eggs. <laughs> That's another great scene from that movie. <laughs> Actually, I've never seen this movie either. <laughs> what? I, I, I know, I know of the iconic scenes, but what? That's, that's it. I what we seen. have here <laughs> is a failure <laughs> to communicate. Right, <sighs> Rich, Man, number two. Rich, stop feeding off me, guys. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, my number two actually came out the same year. Uh, I still think Quinn Luke should have won the Oscar, and I still think Paul Newman should have won the Oscar. But in the scene. If uh, Sidney Portier won the Oscar, I'd have been okay with it because it's a powerful scene is when he's sitting there and he's demanding respect. They call me Mr. Tibbs from Heat of the Night. Now, I know the line, but I have never seen the movie. Oh, I've never seen it. Have you seen uh, Heat of the Night? I've never seen it. Tell Although, me. my mom watches the TV show. <laughs> with uh, Carol O'Connor? With Carol O'Connor, yeah. <laughs> I made out during it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've never seen it. What, I've, seen, I've seen that scene, but... Yeah, yeah. They call me Mr. Tibbs. Is that the line? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They call me Mr. Tibbs. All right. You're falling on deaf ears here. So, All right. Uh, number three. So number three. Uh, to be fair, those are probably a couple movies that I should have seen. Yeah, I, I agree. You probably should. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number three. I'm gonna go with Gary Cooper's movie High Noon. At the very right. end of the movie, he throws the badge down into the ground. It's an iconic scene, and there's a lot of story behind it. The town wanted him to leave and run, but he didn't want fear. He was afraid, but he didn't want fear to overtake take him. He was retiring the next day. He stays. He fights on his own, and he just looks at the town people, and he's just like. They all abandoned they him. They all abandoned him. They all didn't believe in him, and he's just pissed. And he threw it on the ground, and this caused a backlash outside of the movie with John Wayne calling uh, Gary Cooper, I believe he called him a communist, and it was un-American that he threw the badge down. Yeah. Surprising that the Duke would call someone a communist. I, it's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I think it was commies. That's probably what he called them. Probably. No, I agree with you. I, I think the whole that whole sequence, the gunfight at the end uh, with uh, Grace Kelly uh, shooting oh, yes. one of the bad guys through the window when she was like so anti-violence, and the whole sequence leading up to that, then to culminate with the badge in the dirt oh, just, you're, you're right this yeah. is definitely one of the greatest movie moments of all time have you seen high noon ryan i saw shanghai noon <laughs> <laughs> no different wow. movie no no all right tim uh nope you guys i have never res- seen respect this the either. classics man i know there, All I, right, I know. Man. I, there's a ton of them that I need to catch up on. <laughs> you know, they keep putting up these zero superhero movies. So yeah, yeah, we're I don't have time. my top five is going so fast. 
You got. I'm totally on your side here. All right. Rich. What else you got? Number four, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Great scene is when they're pinned on this cliff, and they can either fight and die, give themselves up and go to jail, or as Paul Newman comes up with this great idea to jump off. And Robert Redford is not having any of it. He's like, no, nah, I'm going to shoot this guy. And he's like, no, nah, man, we'll, we'll jump. And he's like, and he kept fighting him on it. He's like, no. Nah. And then finally he admits that he can't swim. And then yeah. Paul Newman looks at him and is like, the Paul's going to kill you anyway. Yeah. And then it's, it, it's great because uh, Robert Redford looks, you see the fear in his eyes, like he's going to do it. And he does this, oh, and then he's jumping. And then it's a long drop. It's a long it's like, drop. Probably takes two, three seconds for them to hit the water. Oh, yeah. So that was probably the best part of the movie, even the end of the movie. Well, was they, I was just going to say the ending is one of the all time great endings where they, right. they charge out to face the Mexican Guns army. Blazing. But they do the freeze frame to leave it ambiguous because people believe that they weren't killed in that standoff, that they went on to live long lives. So right. instead of the movie deciding it for you, they freeze frame it and say, all right, now you take it from here. Yep. And I thought that was a that was, really great ending. That was another good moment. Brian? Um, just uh, wake me up when Richard's done with his list. All right. Wow. Tim. Unfortunately, that's another one that I'm sure is a classic. But, <laughs> and I've seen that, I've seen that scene. And I've probably seen more of it, but I don't remember sitting down from beginning to end and watching it. <laughs> so what number was that? Four? That was number four. I have Let's a, hear I have number a, five. I have a lot on here, but I'm just picking them as I go here. Number five, I'm going to give it to uh, Charlie Chaplin's The Dictator. Okay. His whole career, he's a silent film guy. <laughs> Ryan, where are you going? Where are you going? Ryan. Where are you going? <laughs> he left. He, he left He walked us. out the door. He left us. A jackass. Anyways, the uh, speech, the you, you, speech, the, the speech, speech at the end. You know, One Charlie the greatest Chaplin. Greatest monologue. First time in he gives movie. any line in any movie because now they have talkies. It's one. It is probably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, monologues ever in a movie. All right, I agree. No, nope, never seen it. All right, you've so... seen the speech though. <laughs> I don't think I have. It's wow, it's on YouTube, uh, and everybody shares it on Facebook, especially with elections and stuff. All right. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to uh, f- go through the rest of my top 10, uh, starting off with what I feel might be one of the funniest movie moments of all time. Uh, quite possibly the funniest movie moment of all time. Uh, as a young person seeing this movie, is probably the hardest I've ever laughed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think this is one of the funniest scenes of all time. Oh, excuse me. Blazing Saddles. I remember the experience of sitting in the theater watching that movie and the roar of laughter that came from the audience and people talking about that sequence. It's perfectly appropriate for the title of this program, Movies for Dumb Guys. Um, I think it might be hands down the funniest sequence I've ever seen in a movie. Ryan, if not this scene, what do you think is the funniest movie moment? The funniest movie moment? Um, I don't think it was this scene. I, I I would pick different scenes from this movie. Um, I don't know that I have the... F- Can you come back to me? I'll come back to you. Tim? Yeah, that's a tough one. I'd have to think about that myself. Uh, but another good uh, flatulence scene would be from Dumb and Dumber. Well, I mean, it's more than flatulence. Oh, when, when he's he, uh, on the toilet. Yeah, that's, I got one. That's a classic. Yes. The hair and something about Mary. That's a good one. That's a good one, too. That's a good one. Is that I, gel? I thought about that, too. Yeah. Rich, do you have a funniest movie moment? <sighs> Not off the top of my head right now. It's... Well, think about it. We'll come back. Sh- you. Surely, don't. Stop calling me Shirley. After the break. Let's stick with the comedy was theme. That was that the one? Yeah, it was. It was it. Stop calling me Shirley. Here's another uh, great movie moment in my top ten. Come in, Ray. Pittman, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. 
It's right here, Ray. It's looking at me. He's an ugly little spud, isn't he? I think he can hear you, Ray. Don't move. It won't hurt you. Love that sequence. I, again, I remember the audience reaction, laughing out loud. That's the moment where Bill Murray's character, you know, he goes in all skeptical, not believing in this garbage, and then all of a sudden he gets attacked by Slimer. And uh, such a great movie moment that helped cement Bill Murray's uh, reputation as a comedy legend. Uh, anyone want to chime in on Ghostbusters? You know, this is when, at the beginning of the movie or the podcast. I said we're going to mention movies that I didn't even think about. That would be one of them. Definitely a very iconic scene. I do love Bill Murray. His birthday is tomorrow, as is mine. So happy birthday, Mr. Murray. <laughs> Tim? Yeah, that movie is another one that's got a lot of iconic scenes. I mean, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, yeah. all the stuff at the end. Um, a lot of stuff. Richie? I think you guys covered everything I was going to say. All right. <laughs> My next clip, uh, this is probably one that you did not think of, Ryan, but when you hear this clip, you're going to be like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. This is really funny. It's really funny. Uh, what do you mean I'm funny? It's funny, you know. It's a good story. It's funny. You're a funny guy. What do you mean? the way I talk? It's just, you know, you're, it's, you're just funny. It's, it's funny, you know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how? I mean, what's funny about it? Tommy, no, you got it all wrong. Oh, oh, Anthony. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? You're right. Funny how? Just, what? Just, you know, you're, you're funny. <laughs> you mean, so? man, let me understand this, because I, you know, maybe it's me, I'm a little f***ed up, maybe. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. I'm here to f***ing amuse you. What do you mean, funny? <laughs> so, eventually, Joe Pesci's character from Goodfellas lets him off the hook. But I remember watching that movie. Again, another movie that just made me so tense and stressed out and during that sequence you it's already established that his character is just nuts but during that sequence you're like what the hell is going on like is he gonna kill this guy right here and then he lets him off the hook and everyone's laughing and i'm like that was crazy that's one of the nuttiest scenes in in a, in a movie so ryan what do you think of that particular moment from goodfellas um well you were wrong i did think about this and i did uh, contemplate throwing it on here and it is a great great scene there are so many in that movie from when joe pesci gets shot like didn't see that coming yeah he thinks um, he's getting made and then he walks into the house yeah, yeah and boom gone um you know uh, even even the 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 his, joe pesci's mom with her painting um you know they sell that painting now like just so many different moments, but that is definitely a great one. Tim? Yeah, um, same thing. I thought about it, but I didn't put it on there. But, yeah, that's that's uh, um, definitely an iconic movie moment. Um, a, another great part is when, the, you know, the helicopters are finally coming after him at the end, and he's uh, he's trying to get away from them and just, you know. One it's line that like, keeps uh, popping in my head is "Get your shine box." That's another right, one yeah, where the guy just keeps I'm, going yeah, at him yeah. about and then that's shine when, box. That's yeah, that's why he ended up getting killed, right? Because he's because he ended up snapping and yeah, yeah, killing yeah. that guy yeah, who was yeah. a made guy, right? Yeah, Rich. Well, I'll tell you, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, good pick. I like that scene, and uh, you know that that scene stuck with me so much that uh, was one time I was in uh, Santa Monica. This restaurant, and I saw Roy, Ray Liotta. Oh. And the, uh, ah, you got to give me a warning. Oh. Ow, my back. And the first thing that popped in my head was that scene, and I thought, would it be funny if I walked up to him and said, <laughs> you think I'm funny? But obviously I didn't do that. He's probably never heard that. No, he's yeah, probably yeah. since then. He probably since would have pistol whipped you like he did that guy <laughs> that on his wife. Might have. All right. And uh, another one I'm going to throw out here. Now, Jaws, when Jaws came out, you know, it inspired a lot of knockoffs. We were talking about this earlier. Orca, uh, Tentacles, Piranha, all this stuff that came over. The Meg. The Meg. But none of these movies hold a candle to Jaws. And part of it is because of the characters and because of the dialogue. And uh, I'll play, I'm will play. i going to play a little bit of this that I think is one of the 
defining moments of Jaws, if not the moment that made Jaws go from a good movie to a great movie. Shark comes the nearest man that man he start pounding and hollering and screaming. Sometimes the shark go away. Sometimes he wouldn't go away. Sometimes that shark he looks right into you. Right into your eyes. You know the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes. Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. So, um, Robert Shaw, incredible performance. There's a story behind it that they had filmed that scene when he was drunk originally, and it was awful, and everyone was disappointed, and Robert Shaw was just really embarrassed, and he begged Steven Spielberg for another try. So the next night, they set it up, they redid it, and he knocked it out of the park. And I really think that scene is one of the, the, the pivotal scene of the moment that achieved greatness. Uh, anyone want to comment on Jaws? Not my thing. Tim? I, I, I mean, nothing against it, but it's just not one of my favorite movies. Richie? I tell you what, Johnson. <clears throat> that's another good pick. Another good scene and all this stuff. One of the reasons outside of Paul Newman that I wanted to become an actor was when I saw this movie. The and Bruce. I, Huh? The Bruce. Yeah. Okay. Shark. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, the shark, was, uh, no, this scene, this very scene, the very powerful, the way he, it, like he lived it, it really, that's what I shoot for when I act. I want to be right. that character, feel that character, and uh, it's a great movie moment for me personally. All right. Uh, we're running low on time. Uh, Ryan, throw some, uh, some of the rest of your list out here. All right. I got a, a lot, so I'm going to do just rapid fire real quick here. Um, the Departed, the end scene of The Departed. Nobody saw that coming. That was or, shocking. Yeah, that was mm-hmm. amazing. Um, I like uh, Sixth Sense, the end of Sixth Sense. I agree. Uh, crazy. The Natural, when you uh, shatter those lights as he's running around, those lights going Good off. That's Definitely. a great, great movie moment. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, th- I mentioned Rocky IV. Um, the Avengers, Infinity Wars. At the end. Yep. Everybody in the theater just sat silent. It was uh, one of those <laughs> mo- moments that yep. everybody That is felt. definitely going to be a be, future classic moment. Yeah, people yeah. will be talking about that long after we're gone. Absolutely. Um, Basic Instinct had a pretty iconic moment. <laughs> um, That's true. Definitely. Yeah. Nice. And then um, I got uh, the Freedom Speech from Braveheart. Good one. Um, Braveheart had a bunch they of moments. take our wives. Uh, yeah. We'll never take our freedom. freedom. Um, and then Just, I'm going to finish it off with a really bad one. <laughs> right. The, the curb stomp from American History X. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, that, that, that is a, pretty. It's a movie <laughs> moment. Yeah. Oh, I got one more. I'm sorry. Fight Club. Uh, when they reveal, um, at the end of Fight Club, what that's all about. All right. Tim? Uh, I'll do the rapid fire thing too. My number six was Jurassic Park when the dinosaurs are originally revealed. I, I would for me that's a great moment. I'm gonna go with the T Rex escape. I absolutely love that scene. Yeah, that's great too. Um I had the sixth cent as as number eight actually. Uh the shower scene from Psycho was my number nine. Good one. Uh the hobbling scene from Misery was oh, my, my number God. ten. I just remember like everybody in the theater like going, Gah! Yeah, you know, like freaking out. And, and, and if one. anyone's curious, the book was far worse than the movie. Oh, as far as the, way the they stuff, it? the stuff they did that oh. that Annie did to him oh, okay. were, was awful in the book. Okay. Worse so, than that, if you can imagine. Then just real quick, um, Apocalypse Now, the ride of the Valkyrie scene. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, e- E.T. when they when he lets bikes. their bikes take off. Good one. Uh, the Rosebud part in Citizen Kane when that's finally revealed. The Iron Giant at the end when he sacrifices himself. Yeah, as Superman, Good. and the final scene in Seven: What's in the Box? All right, Rich, real quick, We've got the dress, a minute. The dress in Subway Gate and the Seven Year Itch. Good. Uh, crop duster attack in North by Northwest. The uh, dad playing catch at the end of Field of Dreams. Top of the World, Ma with White Heat. I am Spartacus. The return of Luke Skywalker and the death scene. The death scene of Elias and Platoon. Why do you always go. have a crop dusting thing? As far as classics, uh, we got um, Casablanca, Here's Looking at You, Kid, Gone with the Wind, Frankly, My Dear, I Don't Give a Damn, and It's a Wonderful Life. Teacher says every time bell rings, Angel gets his wings. All right, good show, guys. Thank you for listening. Gosh. We'll see you next time on Movies for Dumb Guys. He's looking at you, kid.